welcome to Second Baptist Church this morning. Thank God that we are here this morning on this side of heaven. Amen. We're going to give God glory on and praise for who he is and for all he has done. Amen. Lord, I'm serving. We have a song from our choir. Praise the scripture by Deacon Lee Bradley. Uh, words of encouragement. Uh, Sunday school with you. Another song from our choir after that to preach the word the church say. Thank you. 
that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For most describe the righteousness which is of the law, that the man who doeth things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaks on this wise, say not in thy heart, who shall ascend unto heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend unto the deep, that is to bring Christ again from the dead. But what said, the word is not in thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession, confession is made unto salvation. I read Romans 10, 1 through 10. Amen. Lord, have a blessing on this holy word. Amen. 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 in your womb. Yes, 
Yes, he said, you have uh, two manners of people in your womb. Then he said something, he said, uh, the one will be stronger than the other, and the elder shall serve the young. Go ahead, go ahead. Now that word serve, if I can, it's the same word serve in Genesis 27, verse 40, when uh, Isaac, the father of Jacob and Esau, told Esau, he said, by thy sword shall thou live, and shall serve your brother. He said, when you have dominion, the yoke shall be broken off your neck. And the word serve means to be in bondage too. Right. So when you do look out the scriptures, Esau was never in bondage to Jacob physically. Right. But spiritually he was. Yeah. Because of the, of the birthright and the blessing. And the bondage was the, 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 the thoughts and the anger that Esau felt from the blessings his brother stole from him. So he was in bondage until it, with that, until he finally overcame it in Genesis 32. So, he said the older, the older self served the younger. And when Esau was born, after that Jacob was born, and his heel grabbed a hold of uh, Esau, his hand grabbed a hold of Esau's heel, symbolizing that later on, I'm going to trip you up. Hello, hello. hello. And, and, and that was the, the birth of his name. Of being a trickster. Uh, so question is, every everybody's name has a meaning and a purpose. Yes, sir. Right. Do you remember when you start living out the meaning of your name? <laughs> Do anybody know the meaning of your name? Oh, yeah. Esau, I mean Jacob started living out the meaning of his name when his when his brother came in from hunting. Because Jacob was a Esau was a hunter. And so Jacob was a plain man, full of intense. Mm -hmm. When he was a mama's boy, had a lot of time on his hands. <laughs> and they got some stuff. So as they got older, Esau came in from hunting Jacob, like I'm hungry, give me this food. And, and who in their right mind would say, sell me your birthright, you want something to eat? <laughs> That's when his name started coming to fruition. Right. There you go. Jacob's name. Right. And God chose Jacob over Esau because Esau thought with his flesh. Right. He had these fleshy urges. His, his physical appetite was more than his spiritual appetite. And he desired what he wanted. When his parents told him, don't marry outside the race, Esau wouldn't marry the Hittite women, which was forbidden. His appetite and his fleshy desires, his fleshy thinking, God didn't like. Yes, Even though Jacob had flaws, his lying, his trickery, even he lied on God. Yeah. But God still used him. Mm -hmm. Jacob's mind was different from Esau's. He had a spiritual mind. Because every time when, when, when he was going, sent to his uncle's house, y'all remember the Jacob's ladder when he went to sleep, when he woke up. Yes, sir. He said, Lord, if you be with me, I'm going to give you a tenth of everything you give me. Yeah. Jacob had a spiritual way of thinking. Right, right. But Esau had a, a, a physical way, a carnal way of thinking. And all this, reason why he chose Jacob before Esau, because of the bloodline of Christ. Yeah, that would all blow boils down to. So, sometimes when we think God hasn't chose us for something, it's because we think on him too much. Uh -huh. Instead of spiritually. Yeah. But once we start speaking, thinking more spiritually and acting more spiritually, then God can use us. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Now we have words of encouragement. Deacon Woods going to introduce the encouraging words from our, our brother. Go ahead. All right. I'm not the encourager, but I'm here to introduce the encourager. Amen. All right. All right. All right. The encourager this morning is a man that I've known since he was a young man. All right. Not that he's not still a young man. He's born <laughs> into a man with some substance. He's debonair. And I don't want when he comes forth for you to be misled because he looks so good. He's got some depth to what he thinks and what he has to say. Amen. And over the years, he's proved himself to be a, an aggressive, strong businessman, a man who knows what he wants to do in life and goes about doing it the right way. So I'm going to bring you, I don't think I have to introduce him to anybody, I'm just going to bring up Brother Darius Wicks, who's the chairman of our ushers. Come on, Darius.
church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is the Pastor Tyler. Pastor Tyler. Go ahead, Darius. Go ahead, Darius. What can I say about Go Pastor ahead, Darius. Okay. Um, well, first of all, I'm saying God bless everyone here today. God bless my wife for being here with me today. Grab, grab, grab the mic. Grab, grab the mic. Um, yes. This is what I can say about Mr. Pastor Tyler. To me, he's a great influencer. He listens. I ran through a couple of um, obstacles in my life that I had to sit down with Pastor Tyler and talk about. And um, one of the obstacles was kind of very, uh, you know, the devil was trying to use me and bring me back to a lifestyle that I had come from. And one of the wise things Pastor Tyler told me, he told me, oh, the devil is trying to use you. He said, if you just depend on God, basically, keep your faith, keep moving to where you go, everything will disappear. So, you know, I'm still a little angry in my, my own mind to think of what I wanted to do. You know, I was like, but then I decided to just sit back and let God do it. So one of the struggles happened, I was um, robbed before. So it ended up the guy that robbed me ended up getting incarcerated like two weeks later. So I didn't have to do anything. And I was in. You were crazy. God basically removed, removed some of my enemies out of my life because you know sometimes they want you to stand with your own flesh and fight your own fight but the fight really ain't yours it's the lord's yes, yes sir the Bible says. yes sir another incident was um i was wrong for incarcerated one time and pastor Tyler said and they was just like oh you know you can go to jail you go to penitentiary we're gonna give you three years i'm like three years i'm like i ain't come talk to us i said hey i ain't do it like they said i did but you know i was kind of praying they want to give me probation for three years Pastor said, he looked at me and say, you know, I'm crazy. I said, you know, he said, and I ain't let nobody put nothing on me that I ain't do. <laughs> <laughs> so I stood in the gap and I stayed there. And guess what? I beat the case. Yeah. Another time the Lord was just telling me, be patient, wait on him. Don't listen to what the world has to offer you because the world don't offer you nothing good sometimes. That's right. But then when you start to walk the walk and depend on God, and you have someone who can teach you and give you some encouraging words and you stand, stand strong and stay faithful to him and listen, things will move around. So I must say, he has given me some great advice a couple of times in my life. And you just keep on giving that advice you get to everyone. And we really appreciate you and we love you, Pastor Tyler. Keep the movement. Amen. Thank God you. bless you, man. Amen.
praise the Lord for this is the day the Lord has made. Amen. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. God bless you, Frank Williamson, Reverend Harris, to the deacons, trustees, finance, ushers, to all of you who are worshiping with us in person this morning, and those who are joining us online. We thank God for all of you. Amen. Thank you, Brother Darius, for that great tribute, words of encouragement. Amen. Amen. We'll put your check in the mail. <laughs> hey. Amen. Darius is my brother. We go way back. And uh, I'm just grateful the Lord is with him and blessing him and his family. So we continue to cheer for you. Praise the Lord. thank Reverend Williamson for reviewing the Sunday School lesson uh, because this morning we continue with the notion of the Lord picking a younger son. Amen. I felt led this morning to go a little bit earlier on the timeline than Jacob and Esau. We felt led to mess with Cain and Abel. Join me in Genesis chapter 4, beginning with verse 4, Genesis chapter 4, beginning with verse 4, and then I'm going to read from Luke chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4. Ending with verse 4, and it reads, And Abel, he also brought the firstlings of his flock, and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Here's the but. But unto Cain and his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, but very angry, and his countenance failed. The Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why are you wroth? Why is your countenance fallen? This is what the Lord said. If you do well, shall you not be accepted? And if you don't do well, sin lieth at the door. Unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Luke chapter 4, verse 5 through 8 says, verse 5 says, And the devil taking him, him being Jesus, up to a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. The devil said to Jesus, All this power will I give you, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. Whomsoever I will, I give. If thou will worship me, all this will be thine, will be yours. Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Amen. Amen. Pray with us this morning. As we ask the very personal question, is my worship right? Amen. Is my worship right? Is my worship right? In a senior citizen complex, there was an older man who lived next to the apartment of an older woman. This woman was a church-going lady, morning, noon, and night. Every time there was a church service, she was up in there, worshiping the Lord. But this brother, 
He watched TV morning, noon, and night. And it was now time for the Sunday evening football game. And changed channels, getting ready to watch Sunday evening football. Boom! TV blew out. So he knew the church lady was at church. So he figured, while she gone, I'm going to take my TV over, get her, and uh, get hers and bring hers back so I can watch the game. So lo and behold, he was implementing his plan. All up in her pot, in the dark, switching TV. To his surprise, she came home, she saw somebody moving in the dark, and she said, stop, Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins and receive the Holy Ghost. And he stopped in his tracks, put the TV on the counter, she called the police on the cell phone. Police showed up. He was still right there. Put the handcuffs on him. She praised the Lord for the word of God. And on the way out, the police officer asked the man, said all she did was quote scripture. Why, why didn't you stay right there? He said, man, all I heard is that she had an axe and 238. <laughs> icebreaker of this story is an attempt to show that we can be real close to one another, live one close, live close to one another. But what's really important in our lives, what we really hold to be important can be very, very different. And this morning I just want to say ask the question, what, what do we really put first in our lives? And whatever the answer to that is, you might be surprised what you find yourself doing because you put that thing first. His brother here wanted to see that game so bad and he figured the sisters at church he ain't going to miss her TV. Let me just swap it out. So I can have what I want. She already got what she wants. What, what is it that I want more than anything else? What have I done out of the way because of that top shelf battery I have in my life? That's the question this morning, y'all. Any of us can be present anywhere, but that doesn't mean what's on my top shelf matches where I'm present. We're tuning in this morning on the very first worship service in Scripture. Two brothers showed up to worship. The older one showed up. His trade, that boy was a farmer. He could grow anything. He was a green thumb in the field. Whatever he planted, it grew. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. His younger brother came home, and his younger brother was a sheep herder. They both had different trades, and they both were good at what they did. But now comes the time to come before daddy's and mama's God. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. And it was the first worship service, y'all. Cain decided, you know, I'm just going to bring 
anything. Because I'm the one. Yeah. And it's going to be all right just because I, I, me, myself, and I yeah. brought it. Yeah. But on the other hand, his brother came. And the word is, the brother bought the best yeah. of the flock. First things, the good stuff. Ham hocks with meat on it. Yeah. <laughs> he brought the best and humbly presented his best of the best to the Lord. Who you think offering the Lord going to accept when he answered by fire? And behind the two sons, it, it wasn't what they brought. It was the attitude yeah. behind which they brought it. Yeah. Yeah. And the oldest brother had some mama influence, we believe. Oh, yeah. I was in seminary, and my professor there down in Moody Bible Institute shared an inspiring thought that stayed with me ever since. He said in Genesis 3.15, when the Lord uh, prophesied to Adam and Eve that uh, the seed of the woman will crush the head of the seed of the serpent. Yeah. It, was a, it was a promise, it was a prophecy of the one who was to come. Yes. Yes. Now God was talking about Jesus. Yeah. Yes. But Eve heard the sermon. Mm -hmm. Hello somebody. And she applied it to somebody else, we believe. Right. Because when Adam and Eve came together, Eve conceived and had a firstborn child. She said, and we quote, I have gotten a man from the Lord. All right. So her announcement causes us to believe that she thought her child was the promised one. Yeah. In God's prophecy. All right. Anybody here ever misinterpreted the sermon before? Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. This is not the time to raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> it is possible she thought a firstborn son came was the promised one. Yeah. And we do have to be careful about the hand that rocks the cradle. Oh, yes. That's right. Hello, somebody. Mama's influence on our firstborn son may have been going to work there, y'all. Y'all know ain't nobody like mama's influence. I thank God I had a good mama. Four years old, I still remember to this day. Mama held me by my hand, taking me to the local church there on 4340 Lake Park Amen. on a Sunday morning. Right. Yeah. I remember the preacher extending the invitation and joined Accept Christ. And at four years old, y'all, I joined church once, came back the next Sunday. <laughs> he extended the invitation, and I felt so sorry for the preacher that nobody was joining, so I joined again. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Been with the Lord ever since he's been with me, y'all. All because mama had me by my hand. That yes. hand that rocks the cradle. Hello, yes. somebody. Yes. In Eve's case, she made her raise her boy thinking he was the one. Mm. Boy, you the one. You the one that God had prophesied and promised. You are the one. And it appears that Cain had the condition that you and I know other folk around us may have. Does anybody know anybody with the need to be first? I pray and hope you don't work for somebody like that. <laughs> I pray and hope you don't have nobody like that in your family. <laughs> 
Did you jump the broom with somebody like that? No. <laughs> we don't want to admit that right now. <laughs> we'll catch up with you with those online. <laughs> All of us likely know somebody with the need to be first. Yes. Yes. We got a lot of young people in the street with the need to be first. I'm the one. I'm in charge. I'm running this thing. And if you don't like it, they don't have 38s no more. They have AK-47s. <laughs> Hello, y'all. He had the need to be first. Yeah. But, 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 but get this now. The boy went to church with his brother. They, they came before the presence of God. And when it came time to make the offer, came with his position, with his conditioning, maybe from mama, just put anything on that altar. It's all right, because I brought it. And the Lord just looked at me. Uh -huh. But when that younger brother humbly brought the best of the best, yeah. the fire of the Lord came down. And accepted the offer. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. And when the older brother saw the fire, accept his younger brother offering. Mm -hmm. He felt thrown under the bus. Mm -hmm. I can't have this. I, he, he was discombobulated. He, he just didn't know what to do. He could not get himself out of the And the Lord loved this y'all. The Lord showed up and said, I really don't have no respect of person. If you do well, my fire will come down and accept yours too. But if you keep going the way you're going, if, if you don't do well, I got to let you know, sin is lying at the door. Hebrew word here for sin lying at the door is like a crouching animal, like a lion waiting to pounce. Right, yes. It's just waiting to have you for lunch. Yeah. Yeah. And the Lord was trying to get him to change his way. Right. Or else a worse thing would come upon him. Yes. Cain heard what the Lord said. And unfortunately, it was water off the duck's back. Yeah. Called his brother up, said, hey, let's go take a walk out of the field. <laughs> yeah, I want to do some brother, brother catching up talk. Got his young brother, took him out in the field. His brother wasn't looking. Hit him over the head and took more than his TV. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Left his brother out there with the blood running to the ground. And the blood testified to the Lord that Cain killed his brother. And when the Lord appeared to Cain and follow up, giving him a chance to repent, your brother's blood is testifying to me. What has he done? To Am I my brother's keeper? That's where brother keeper would come from. You know? Yeah. And instead of taking God's offer to repent, to confess his wrong and repent, he did just like Mama did. Oh, yeah. Passed the buck. Y'all know when God confronted Adam, he said, Adam said, that woman you gave me. That's right. <laughs> God confronted the woman. He said, she said, the serpent. Yeah. And the serpent didn't have nobody else to blame. Hello, somebody. So to this day, you all, how am I managing self? Y'all hear what I'm saying? And so, because Cain heard the Lord and didn't get self out the way, here is the downside of self first. Cain would say, I didn't get myself out the way. Sin had its way with me. I had no defenses. It overtook me. It's bigger than me. 
And when God is not first and sin comes along, y'all, it will have its way. It's going to be like watching us on TV. We're going to be like Urkel. Did, did, did I do that? <laughs> the urges and impulses, y'all. Bigger than us! Yeah. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You might surprise yourself what you would do when the murders, impulses, hit you. Yeah. Oh, y'all let me do it about it. If you rep, it, it can hit you, rep, but it, I'm fine. I'm doing all right. Rep. I want these folks to know what I be doing when I ain't here. Hello, somebody. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. That boy had a case of the King Helpers and took out his brother. Yeah. The man in my opening story had the King Helpers, took his neighbor's TV. Yeah. I just got to watch that game. What about me? When is the last time I had the King Helpers, Red? And I did what I didn't want to do. The good that I want to do, that I didn't. And the evil that I didn't want to do, that I wound up doing. Yeah. Yeah. I need some help, Reverend, managing myself. It keeps getting in the way. Y'all hear what I'm saying? But when we come before the Lord, yeah. can I get self out of the way? That his fire will come and accept my sacrifice. Y'all know what his fire is now? Called the Holy Spirit. Yeah. If I can get self out of the way, his Holy Spirit will live in me. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Oh, hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, this is where the word worship comes into play. And we felt led, the Lord led us to go this way. Because worship now is falling off All right. across the church. Yeah. Amen. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. Putting God first now mm -hmm. has got C O V I D, COVID. All right. COVID. All right. Hello. Now a lot of folk are putting God first now. Yeah. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. For fear that self might get sick. Uh -huh. Hello, somebody. Now, I'm not saying we can't do it safely and the right way, but in the process, what happened to my value for God first? Y'all yeah, yeah. hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. Y'all, God first is suffering a pandemic right now. Yeah. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Coming before his presence. And as Tony Evans would say, Worship is the image of a camel coming to the master, the camel's master, and the camel has to bow down so the master can remove the load off of his back. Yeah. Y'all get that image of worship? Yeah. And you all, there's a, so much load going on these days. Uh -huh. So much stuff, yeah. stress, yeah. pressure, anxiety, mm -hmm. trial. Tribulations added to my load. Yeah. I need to have the right worship so that when I come to his presence, I bow down. Yeah. And he's my master. He removes the load from my back. Yeah. And when I feel the lightness in my spirit, I say, yes, Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. I feel the difference in me. Yes, Y'all, we, we, we need that that regulation, he's a heart fix and a mind regulation. We need somebody to take that load off because we can only bear so much. I thank God for his realness in my life to regulate my load. Because every time I sense his presence, my eyes well up with water. Hallelujah. My spirit bows down yeah. and he takes my love. Amen. Is he taking your load this morning? Amen. It's going on, y'all. A 
There's a lot of folk bearing loads out there. Amen. But one person can only handle so much load. Yes. Folk are reaching breaking points. Yes. All you got to do is put a straw on to break the other camel's back. Because folk ain't getting that loads removed. Yeah. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. Counselors, psychologists, Therapists, lines are long. Y'all yeah. hear what I'm saying? But brothers and sisters, it's good to have a brother and sister to talk to. All right. Can't nobody lift your load yeah. like the load. Amen. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, is my worship right? Yeah. It's not enough just to have a presence before God. Am I doing that bowing step, getting self out of the way? Yeah. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And now, y'all, we go to the one who was on trial for all of us. All right. Yeah, Satan got Cain. All right. Got Cain to uh, stick with himself more than the truth. And Cain went from the presence of the Lord and never came back. Hello. God brought a new, came in, uh, Adam and Eve had a new son named Seth, and the line of Christ came through Seth. He had to let Cain go. Y'all yeah. yeah. hear what I'm saying? Here down through time and the fullness of time, God sent forth his son. Hello, somebody. His name is Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus, second person in the Trinity Godhead. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. has all the powers and the privileges of God. Yeah. But when Jesus took on flesh, yeah. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, says, let this mind be in you, yes. which is in Christ Jesus. Though he was in the form of God, he, he, he emptied himself. Hello, somebody. Yeah. He laid down all of his divine powers. Yes. Yeah. Even though his identity was God, he left his powers on the shelf, yeah. took on the form of a man, yeah. and went out into the wilderness to be on trial for you and me against the same enemy that conquered Adam and Eve and all of us and had us in his captivity. Yes. Jesus went out there, y'all, yeah. in the wilderness. And the devil came to Jesus with a temptation. Hello, somebody. To tempt Jesus in his worship. Jesus is a unique case. He is God. But he wasn't using his powers as God. Yes. So the devil put his hands on Jesus. Yes. Hello, somebody. Hello, did y'all hear that? Yeah. The devil put his hands on Jesus. Hello, hello. What happened the last time the devil put his hands on him? Hello, hello. Did that other language show up? Your other side show up? Did, did, did you cuss them out? Did you go upside their head? Hello, what, what happened the last time you know the devil put his hands on you? Jesus here is showing that the devil not only put his hands on him, he carried him. To the highest mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world. Yes. And it didn't change Jesus at all. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. Sometimes the enemy can be all up on you. Yes. Hello, goosebumps all over you. Yes. You're ready to cuss them out. You're ready to go upside their head. But by the grace of God. <laughs> Hello, somebody. By the grace of God. Yeah. By the mercy of God, you pull back. Not in your strength, in his strength. Yeah. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that next morning you thought back, Lord, I thank you. Yeah. I almost killed. Yeah. <laughs> I almost went off. Yeah. yeah. I almost crossed the line. Yeah. But you kept me. Yeah. You know in your spirit, you in your strength would have done. It was already done. Yeah. But by the grace of God, yeah. 
Yeah. Say yeah. 
that he can have preeminence in me. He will exalt me with him in due time, y'all. Don't let the culture of God not first take from me the joy of God being first. It's going on, y'all. A lot of came like folks out there. Need to be first. Self focus. Hello. If you ain't looking, they're going to take your TV. Hello. 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 Those in the church are open. If you're here this morning, not in the church, come on right now. Come on.
Reverend's anniversary, his 29th year anniversary, the 25th of September. We will have the Reverend Dr. Alvin Love, who will be our guest speaker. And then after that, we will go over and have dinner. So make sure you let the office know, or I don't see Helen too. Oh, OK. Make sure you let her know how many people are coming so we can plan accordingly. So that's on the 25th, and that's Reverend's 29th anniversary. Let's come out and support him. Let's come out and support Sister uh, Tyler and all that they are doing in this community and in this church. So I thank you very much. I will see you next door. You can come get your bread. Come get your peppers. Come get you some cookies. Oh, we got some pies, too. So come and get those. I'll see you next door. Thank you. Amen. Amen. That's amen, Sister Jackson. Amen. 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 Thank the Lord for them. Amen. 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 Just want to thank the church in advance for your acts of love and kindness. Uh, Ms. Bobby Cruda. Yes. Um, I have tomatoes in my toggle bags. I've got to be some fresh tomatoes. We have church. All right, Ms. Bobby Cruda. Got some homegrown tomatoes in our car in the bag. <laughs> Pass out to everyone. So, amen. We thank Sister Bobby Cruda for her compassion and kindness. Amen. All right. Good evening, church. Good evening, church. I'm going to make this simple. Uh, many have been asking for a workshop or a seminar, and I decided to plan a workshop for you during the month of October and November. It will be held every, will be held on Tuesdays in October from on the 4th and 11th, and then in November they will be on the 1st, 8th, 15th, and 22nd. Those are on Tuesdays. We teach the Kingdom Man series. And the last time I taught the Kingdom Man series, I taught it, but no man of Second Baptist were there. The only reason why I would teach this is because if the men of Second Baptist show up, period. It's good information to tell you what you should be like as a Christian man, how you should grow as a Christian man, and uh, what a woman, what a Christian woman would be looking for in a Christian man. So it's led by a guy by the name of Tony Evans. And uh, he just gave us some very good information. So uh, be on the alert, and I will be teaching that uh, in November on Tuesday. So uh, be aware. And I'll be over it for one hour. I'm not going to keep you all long. It's going to be from 6 to 7 p.m. in the evening. And that's it. At 7 o'clock, I'm walking out the door. Amen. 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 You can uh, call us out as we teach the Kingdom Man series starting in November. Amen. October. October. All right. Amen. And uh, so we want to encourage the man. Uh, let him know. Let him know that you'll be present. So, amen. Amen. All right. So again, we, man, Sister Tyler, we just want to thank the church for your acts of kindness and love uh, during this time. Thank you for your prayers and support for 29 years. We love you. Uh, the greatest, greatest blessing to me personally is when the kingdom comes for all of us to meet on one of the heaven street corners and celebrate we made it in Jesus Christ. That, that, that's the great blessing right there. Amen. Amen. So uh, we're going, we, we plan to be at Shiloh uh, Church, my home church, next Sunday uh, to uh, speak there. So Reverend Williamson will be uh, carrying on here, our assistant pastor in my, my absence. So I, Thank you in advance for your present support for him. With that, let us stand. Reverend Harris, come on and give us closing remarks and benediction.
but to lift them up before our true and living God. Because we never know that could be us and we'd want somebody to pray. Let us look to God, most gracious and eternal God our Father. Lord, we say thank you for this opportunity to serve and to, to do your will. We thank you, Father, for the message. We thank you for the message, O oh Lord. And Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord, that we would go forth, Father, to do your will, Father, to allow others to see the Christ operate in us, O oh Lord, that they too will come to be saved, O oh Lord. I pray right now, Father, that you would allow your light to so shine in us, that men, women, boys, and girls will see your light and will come to say, what must I do to be saved? Lord, use us to your glory until we meet again.